recap with you what we have covered. Mm, right, okay. Since we're still waiting for, I think, one or two uh, of our classmates to join, so it is good that we just give uh, a recap of what is it that we have covered. Now, in day one, we covered the introduction and we have also learned about the components of the project where we have created the issue and we have added the documents that we want and we also learned about data segmentation. Okay, we segmentize what is it that uh, we create quotations from the data segmentation and we also learned a little bit about memos uh, in the form of reflections as well as memos that we are linking it to the uh, quotations. Uh, the first day is more to uh, putting the project in place with all the documents that you want to analyze, the raw data, the so data sources, you just put them into the project and we move on to the second day. Second day, you have more serious stuff where we actually started to work on the data in our project. Uh, two main functions that we have covered is number one, coding, and number two, we want to explore the codes that we have already uh, created. <clears throat> uh, okay, all right. Um, the first one is coding. Okay, when we learn about when we have created the segmentization of our data, we can actually leave the segment seg data segments um, as it is to stand alone, or we can also link them to specific codes because codes are concepts forming our research framework. Okay? Now, the codes could be created deductively or they could also be created inductively. We have also looked at these different strategies on how to manage our codes, but I will still give a little recap of what uh, is it that we better uh, manage our coding system. Right? Now, when the codes are in place, we also revisited the codes in order to see if there is any overlapping or redundancies. <coughs> right? And um, if there is any overlapping or redundancies, we would merge them together. And we have also linked from the codes to, from code A to code B, and probably also linking from code C more to one or two codes. And when we have linked the codes from one code to another, it will add up the density count of our codes. Let me just show you again what does density means. Right? Now, earlier on, we have spoken a lot about the groundedness because groundedness means <clears throat> how many quotations do we have so far for that code? The second, the third column, however, which is the density, the numbers in this column indicate how many linkages are there in between one code to another code. More numbers we mean, for example, lack of resources here, the number three is the highest number, meaning there are three relationships between this code to another code. Let me just show that in a linkage form, which is a network view, right? Lack of resources is the initial code that we want. There are three uh, a density. Okay, so you would realize when we open a network view for this particular code, you will see indeed there are three linkages connected to our target code. Okay, for example, lack of coding. Sorry, lack of funding, lack of volunteers, and a suggestion to add resources. Not only the linkages are there, but they are in the form of semantic type of linkages, meaning they must, the linkages must carry a meaningful relationship between one code to another. Now, these linkages are very much dependent upon our understanding of the concepts from one concept to another based on our understanding of our data. Now, having said that, let me just uh, recap how to bring in the codes, the quotations for this particular code. Let me just make it bigger, right? Like this, right? And uh, when we are discussing about the lack of resources, we found that there are 
three other concepts which are closely related to this particular code, which is lack of funding. So how do you know this lack of funding has any quotation at all to support it? Now, like uh, I, I did mention in our last class that the network view is very much, how do I say this, is very much customizable based on how we want it. Okay? But I never really showed you uh, in demonstration what is the customization that we can do. For example, um, right? Okay, for example, um, what is it? Um, yeah, display. If you want the display, you can even display or hide the bitmaps. Bitmaps are the icons inside each of these concepts that we have here, right? You can also display, for example, the uh, shading behind the uh, boxes that we have. Or sometimes maybe you do not want to have the boxes. You can also customize it based on the borders. Um, I think what is most, um, how do I say this? All right, extended code label is the one that I want to refer to now. When we put on extended code label, there will be numbers in bracket to the left-hand side of these uh, codes, each of these codes, to indicate the first digit is the groundedness and the second digit is the density. Now, by having this, not only we will be able to, okay, not only we will be able to keep track of how many quotations are there for that code, we would also know if there is any potential linkage to this particular code, right? Now, when you see two, you will straight away know that lack of funding has two density or two relationships connected to it. One of it is the lack of resources. So, in order to bring that out, I can right-click and choose to import common neighbors. Okay, when you do that, not only it will bring out whatever that is connected to it, for example, add funding, okay, because of the problem of there is lack of funding, therefore our suggestion is to add funding. On top of that, we also have the uh, quotations for this uh, particular code. Right? Mm -hmm. Likewise, when you want only the codes to, come, to be shown, you will be able to import neighbors, import codes. Okay, because you know straight away there are two over here. In add resources, um, there is only one density, meaning this is the one. Alright, we have a question here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to expand the code manager screen. When we are back to the code manager, I will expand that and show it so that everybody will be able to see it. Okay. Now, you will see how rich our exploration is visually by using the uh, network view function in FSTI okay. by simply adding our documents to the FSTI project and creating quotations, codes, and memos at the same time. Now, another function which is uh, normally uh, missed out by our participants, and sometimes I do mistakenly miss out also, is the function where we can add more objects to our FSTI project. Now I know that uh, not everybody wants to have a very cluttered um, a network view in front of us. However, I also need to explain uh, about the other features in this uh, network view function. For example, when I click on notes, because notes uh, carry the meaning of objects in FSTI, okay, I can import notes or simply create a new note inside of this uh, network view itself. The notes that I can create are new codes as well as new memos. If you want, okay, you can choose to create a new code or new memo inside of the network view itself. When you do create a, link, a new code, it will be added to our code manager. Uh, earlier on, right? And if that new code indeed belongs to any particular family, you can simply drag that new code into the existing family or drag it to create a new family. Okay? Anyway, I wanted to cover about... Okay, it's this one. Uh, notes, import notes. Okay? By clicking on import notes, uh, 
this window will appear and you will be able to choose what type of note that you want. At the moment, the codes, okay, the, the objects listed here, they are within the type of codes. You can choose other types as well, codes, codes to families, memos, memo families, that would view, and so on and so forth. Okay, I uh, wish to bring in a primary document. Okay, so I will simply click on primary document and all the documents within this project will be shown. When I want it, I can double click to bring it in. Okay, for example, I'm bringing in document number 7 because I know there is a quotation from document 7 over here. Document 10, document 2, document 1 and document 3. How do I know that? It's because of these numbers. Uh, during the last class, somebody did ask me, what does the number mean? Now, these numbers are quotation uh, identifiers. Okay? 3 ratio 3 is a quotation okay, within the box bracket for ratio 1. The first digit means the primary document number. For example, 3 ratio 3 is coming from document number 3, document number 4, document number 2, document number 10, and document number 7. Now, the second digit, it is the order of the quotation in that particular document okay, following the order in which the quotation was created. It is not the order of that quotation in that document, but the order in which the quotation was created in that document. Because you might not be creating codes chronologically from page 1, page 2, and page 3. Sometimes you created the code, uh, the quotation from page 3 first, and then you come back to page 1. Now, whatever that you have created at page 3, the quotation, that will be number 3 ratio 1. Okay? And at page 1, it will be 3 ratio 2. And then you skip to page 10. Page 10 will be 3 ratio 3. For example, this one. So I now want to import the note of primary documents number 34217. I will double click them. 342. Okay. Or I can also highlight the documents that I want. Okay. 7. Then, 243, okay, they are already here. So, I can click on the button import over here. When I do click on and import, these documents will now be shown in front of us. Okay, so that I will be able to see, ah, uh -huh, this document, this quotation comes from which document. Now, having done that, I can control how do I want these uh, primary documents are shown. Okay. They can be, now I know straight away this is a PDF document, this is a Word document. Okay. This is a PDF document. Okay. Likewise, this is a PDF document. This is a, rich, uh, a, a text document, video, MP4, and this one is a rich text format document. I can leave it as such, or I can also ask at least the eye to show a preview of the first page of these documents by going to display and choose full image for PDs over here. Okay, full image for PDs, it will bring out the first page of that particular uh, primary document inside of our network view. Okay, when I do choose that, it shows that uh -huh, this is the front page of our uh, documents, which is highly uh, optional, okay, it's not compulsory to be done, but some people, yes, they do want the uh, primary document to be shown uh, before us, okay? Now, uh, okay, how is it that we can reuse them? I will just simply save this as a network view lack of resources. Now it's very nice because we can generate uh, a network view by simply pulling in whatever that we have created earlier or we can also create a linkage between uh, between these codes or between these quotations from inside of the network view itself. Now taking the example of uh, lack of funding over here, we have 5-2 it means the density, uh, the, the density is 2 and the ground density is 5. There are 5 quotations and there are 2 linkages. <clears throat> I think that this page is too cluttered. 
Okay, since it clutters too, it's cluttered too much, I want to create a new network view for this particular code. No problem. I will simply right click and choose open network so that it will create it will come out in a new network. Okay. Now then again, this retrieval is semi-automatic, semi because you still need to click and give instructions to open, but the retrieval is uh, is very helpful. Okay, why? Because whatever that we have done, the quotation and the coding, it will be retrievable upon demand if you want it. Now for this particular code of lack of funding, this is the network view specifically for this code and all the other codes which have linkages will be shown in our network view. And <clears throat> I also I mentioned an important caution when working with network views during our last class but I will still emphasize it now is because it is a repeating uh, issue or problem among my own participants, my, my participants uh, who came face-to-face -face, uh, training with me why? Because the, uh, in the network view, they are very excited in pulling in uh, the codes, pulling in the quotations, documents with previews and more. They say, oh, it's too cluttered, so they, want, they do not want a specific object in the network view. They tend to right-click to delete. Okay? Right-click to delete. If you do delete this particular object, in this case a code, that code once deleted from the network view is also deleted from the project which is a very uh, uh, unwanted situation why do i say unwanted is because very often when uh, a user uh, does uh, do not want uh, when a user does not want an object in the network view they tend to delete but in fact, they only do not want it in that network view. They still want it uh, available in uh, our project. Okay? So if you do not want it, no problem. You can simply click on remove from view. Okay? Removing from view, it will simply take it out from this network view, but the, the actual object still maintains in our document. Okay? Likewise, you can uh, add in uh, quotations and uh, in other objects as well. So I'm not going to close. Uh, I'm not going to save this part and uh, this network view. But this one I'm going to save it. Okay. I can save it. Why? Because when we save it, we can always come back to do some editing on this network view. Once you export it as a uh, as a image, okay, you cannot edit it anymore because it's a PNG. Okay. You could go through the hassle of editing it using any image editing software, but why would, why would you want to do that? Because if you do save it as a network view, you can always come back anytime. Okay, save as graphic file. Default is PNG. For example, I'm going to put it on my desktop. Here it is. Save. Now let's go to the desktop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, lack of resources. Double click upon it. And here it is. The PNG image of our network view when we have added it, uh, save it as an image. Okay, this is how it looks like. Now, depending upon um, the purpose of you creating this network view, probably you want to add it, add it as an attachment to your research report, which is an A4 size. So you can rearrange the object so that it will be crossed. Uh, portrait or landscape okay uh, if you are looking at a bigger picture of your entire analysis you might be looking at uh, printing out a poster okay which is a bigger a lot bigger size than uh, an a4 paper okay then you can view or you can pull in other objects as well into that particular network view Okay, now having this image, you can simply insert it into any editor applications out there. For example, Word or PowerPoint or even Excel if you want to uh, insert this image. Okay, now, uh, alright, 
I want to talk about code system organization. We have actually covered this part in our earlier uh, earlier uh, class, okay? But uh, I still want to emphasize that there is no specific method of uh, managing your codes, okay? No one can impose upon you that this should be the right way of doing coding because you are a researcher, so you will understand your research framework better. Okay? However, these tips that I am sharing with you is actually to give you a general idea of how you would potentially want to manage your codes. Okay? Number one, you name your codes with prefixes according to shared characteristics. For example, your codes will have specific themes. Okay, so you remember how we have created the list of codes earlier on. Okay, this is it. Right? Uh, view. I'm going to make it font is bigger. I'm going to make it 12. Right? Uh -huh, so you will be able to see it uh, clearer now. Okay? Now, when we have added the codes, okay, initially, deductively or inductively, we would have prefixes for the shared characteristic, like this one. I know straight away when I look at this individual code, I know that this one, this code actually has the characteristic of a challenge, the challenge of lack of resources. Straight away when I look at this, I know it's on perceived or perception of the health services. Likewise, this is talking about suggestion. Now, that is the first type where uh, how we would group together uh, codes for better management. The second one is to color your codes according to shared prefixes. Okay, so whatever prefixes that we have, uh, rather than we put these uh, prefixes in front, you might want to put colors. Okay? Or if you put colors, you maintain these prefixes is even better. Why? Because these prefixes will show that it is a shared characteristic of challenge, but they are also given different colors to differentiate or distinguish between the code A group as opposed to the code B group as opposed to the code C group. Next, we can also group the codes in code families according to shared characteristics. Okay? So we have already done all this actually, uh, where we have added the prefixes to be easier, make it into code families, and optionally we can also change the color because uh, by default it is black. And then we can also create code-to-code -code networks to represent relationships between courses. And these are the ones that we have already covered in our last uh, class. All right. Um, now, uh, save the project. Okay. I want to talk about word cruncher. Word cruncher feature in FSDI, it essentially helps us to break down the words available in our documents and to tell us how many times or the frequency of that particular word cross documents. Okay? And in total, how many times that word appears. Okay? You want to do a breakdown? So the feature is by going to Analysis Word Cruncher. By default, there is a check mark over here. Okay, right now. The word cruncher feature, again, a recap, is to help us to see a general overview of each and individual words used in our uh, documents. For example, I have 10 documents, and from these 10 documents, I know that they are talking about uh, cancer. Okay? Cancer. So... Uh, However, I do not know how many times the word cancer was used in my documents. So I'm going to use the word cruncher feature to tell me this word or this all of these words have been mentioned how many times across documents. Okay, now, um, all right. The first option is by default you have a check mark over here. 
check mark it means we want to do a word cruncher on the selected PD only, which is the primary document open in front of us. If you do may remain or maintain this check mark, it would mean that we only want to break down the words available in this primary document number 11, which is participant 4. Okay? Or if you do not check, it means you uncheck to include all the current documents. This will do a breakdown of all the documents available in our project. Now, uh, you have the option to send the output to uh, Excel, okay, a spreadsheet or a word cloud. Here, it doesn't activate our built-in tool um, because the option we cannot use it. Built-in tool, it would mean that it will open from inside of FGCI itself. At the moment, it's not activated. So we can send it to Excel, for example. Let's look at how it appears. If we do the uh, uh, output, if we send the output to Excel, click okay, on OK. The system is calculating or running a scan. Okay, Once it's done, it's going to be showing like this. Word crunch is finished. The system has created a matrix of 2016 words by 11 primary documents. Okay, 11 primary documents, it will mean the textual documents in our project. It will not do a word crunch on secured PDF. It will not do a word crunch on image, audio, video as well. Alright, and this is the location where it is saved. Now, I'm going to click on open, sorry, click on OK to open the file. Here it is. Okay, now let me show you how it is, how do we read this um, file. <clears throat> now, the first column, which is column A, arranges our words in alphabetical order. If you do have symbols, symbols will appear first. If you have numbers, numbers will be after the symbols, and then only it will start with alphabetical order of A until Z. Okay? Now, the second column here, which is the length, how many characters are there for that particular code, and the remaining ones, where it says a letter P, yeah, P2, 3, 6, 9, 11, and 13, these are the documents, these are only the ones that have uh, text inside. All right? Now, the value inside of each of these columns indicate how many times the, this word appears in that particular document. Okay? In that particular document. <clears throat> uh, and finally, the total count is how many quotations, sorry, how many uh, times that word appears across these documents. Okay? In total, it doesn't do a breakdown of all the documents, but instead it will give us a total count. Now, you can scroll down to find the word close to your heart, or you can uh, sort according to the total count. Because total count, here you wouldn't know, you need to scroll uh, one by one. However, if you sort it accordingly so that the largest number to be on top and the smallest number to be at the bottom, it will be very helpful. Okay, for example, now I highlight the column N because it's my total count of my project. I'm now going to go to sort on top here, on top right hand side, and you can choose which one. Do you want it to be largest to smallest or smallest to largest? So I will personally have largest to smallest in order to show yeah the word ani was mentioned 10 times okay the word school was mentioned four times okay now we sort largest to smallest and we will expand this selection aha now it is shown that the word frequently the most frequently word in our STI project uh, across all the documents is the word the the word the, T-H-E, appears 573 times. You read through the of and health to in for who we is care. Now, majority of these words are um, 
common words. Okay? Common words. End of. But health is a good terminology. Okay? Care is a good terminology. Primary region. These are all words that would potentially carry a meaning. Okay? Rather than the word the. Okay? We know straight away the was mentioned. 472 times in all of our textual documents. Alright. <clears throat> now, in what situation do we want to use this word cruncher feature? Using the word cruncher feature will give us a rough idea okay, of the words used in our project. Alright. Mm, okay, so uh, another key function is by knowing which document, which word was mentioned the most times, um, it will give us a general idea to see if that particular uh, word is worth doing autocoding or not. If you remember autocoding, we learned in the last class. Autocoding helps us to do the search and the coding automatically. Yeah? Right. So, um, if you find something like this, you would know that it potentially makes sense to do autocoding on the word health, care, primary, region, rather than the word the of in for who. Okay. Close this one. Save it. Right. Um, do another word cruncher. This time we're not going to send it to Excel. We're going to create a word cloud of it. Let's go to analysis, word cruncher. Uh, remain all the other instructions. Okay, except for output. I do not want to send it to Excel. I want it to be set to the word cloud, right? So I will click on OK and the system is calculated. Aha. Uh -huh. It is something like this. Mm -hmm. These are all the words used in Apple. Uh, uh, documents in our project. If the size is small, it means it might be mentioned a few times only. For example, when you bring your cursor to each of these words, it will highlight the words and it will also tell you how many times this word was used. Okay? You see, when I bring my cursor to the computer screen, it will tell me, ah, this is one time. It's eight times. Okay? And if it is mentioned so many times, it will be a big, big font in the word club. Excuse me. <clears throat> Alright. So, this is it. Let me scroll down some more. It will show you if the size is big, aha, uh -huh, like this one, the, is the biggest of all the words in this word club. And when you bring your cursor to it, it will tell you the number or how many times that word appears. Right? Um, Alright, so another thing about uh, word cruncher again, is that what if I... Do not want certain words. If you focus on specific words, you want to do a word cruncher? No, not by using the word cruncher tool. Because the word cruncher will do a count of all the words in our uh, project. However, we also have the liberty to give instructions. Please ask at least the I to not count this generic word. For example, the, of, and, is. Okay, all these words are common words that we do not want to count. Okay, so here the option is 
to use the exception list and here is the name stoplist.txt. Okay, you can open it. Alright, and you will find the, uh, the text document of stop list. Okay, alright. Or you can also uh, edit that list yeah, by opening it and then you will see these are the words that you want at least the I to not count and each of these words are arranged uh, one line per word. Okay, for example here you do not want the, so you can just going to put here the, of, and, is. Okay, for example, that's it. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to do another, uh, send it to Excel. Okay. Just to show you if the word the is now not counted. Okay, right, that's it. Open it and see if the word the is mentioned. Uh -huh, this one is sorted by largest to smallest. Expand it. And here, the word the was, it doesn't appear anymore. Okay, the reason why is because we have put in the uh, stop list. The word the into the stop list so that at least I will not count it after this. Alright. So, Okay, mm, now the next topic that we are covering is co-occurrence, co-occurrence of the quotes. Okay, sorry, co-occurrence of the quotations uh, while using uh, code names as the identifiers. Okay, what do I mean by this? If there is any overlapping or co-occurrence between one quotation to another, okay, it will become a an occurrence, co-occurrence situation. Now, I'll give you an example. This entire paragraph talks about services provided. How do I know it's entire paragraph? Because this bar okay, indicates how many lines that uh, quotation lasts. Okay? If it is an entire paragraph, so it's going to be a long line like this. But if it is a smaller uh, quotation size, you click on the orange color and it will be showed this highlighted segment uh, as the quotation. Okay? Alright. Mm. Mm-hmm. So whenever there is an overlapping between one code to another, okay, or uh, it's not accurate for me to say overlapping, but it's actually co-occur. Okay, co-occurrence is the right methodological term, whereby our quotations co-occur with another quotation. Right? Mm. Right, let me just show you this one. Mm, okay, when it does, co-occur, you will see that it comes in different colors. Okay? The first layer is always gray. <clears throat> the second layer is orange. The third layer is green. And the fourth layer is uh, mm, purple, I think. Okay? Because it's not very common that we have co-occurrence up to four levels. Okay? However, if you do have co-occurrence uh, at the fourth level, it will come out as a mm, um, purple. Let me just test that. Okay, this one is mm. okay, like this one. I'm gonna put it under the code name of local culture. Oh, okay, this is a safe size. I shouldn't make it safe size. Uh -huh. Coding, uh, local culture. Again, uh -huh. I, I was right. It will come out as a purple quotation bar 
to our quotation. Right? Mm, now, that is the co-occurrence. So, in what situation can co-occurrence happen? It's this one. Yeah? Co-occurrences will happen if there is any overlapping yeah, co-occurrence between one quotation bar to another quotation bar. Yeah? For example, quotation 1. Okay, there are three quotations in this image. Quotation 1 is the first layer uh, quotation. When it says number 2 over here is the second quotation which belongs inside of that um, uh, first quotation. Okay? Having said that, it shows that probably uh, quotation number 1 is talking about the family. Question number 2 is about a member of that family. And question number three, another member of the family, but also it extends further to uh, the remaining uh, quotation. Okay. So in this case, we have <coughs> okay. So in this case, we have one, two, and three. Okay. Uh, okay. Quotation number one is coded with A. Quotation number two is coded with C. Quotation number three is coded with D. Okay? So in this case, because A and B, okay, sorry, A and B is actually the same quotation. But that quotation has been linked to the code of A and B. So that's why it will show us that a and B, okay, we give instructions to explore our code and quotation, is we can use this Boolean operator of AND. If you say that you want to see a quotation A and B, okay, A and B, it will be uh, the same quotation. So it says one occurrence, mm, there is one quotation for two codes. All right. Mm -hmm. Or A and C, okay, code A and code C, you want it to be code uh, quotation number two, which is inside of question quotation number one. Likewise, the quotation three, it uh, overlaps part of it, part of quotation one. Okay, so. 2 is different from 3 because 2 is within the quotation number 1. However, for quotation number 3, there is a slight uh, co-occurrence, but the remaining text in the body of quotation, uh, quotation number 3, okay, it's not bound by these uh, instructions that we have over here. So in this case, it will tell us that quotation number 3 uh, co occurs partially with position number one. Now let me just give you an example. <clears throat> All right. So in this uh, actually a project, okay? I have given you a quotation as this. So in this case, uh, I want to resize this one just to make it. Uh, uh -huh. just so that it will come out differently, okay? Uh -huh. So this is the case that I was talking about. Let me just unlink this one in order to avoid uh, confusion. Mm -hmm. All right, so this, the statement about the services provided okay, for this particular quotation, this is the situation that is shown in this uh, PowerPoint presentation, okay? The first one is quotation number one, okay, is this one. is talking about services provided. What is within those is quotation on health, okay? Health. It is within the first quotation. Whereby the third quotation, it overlaps partially with 
position 1 and position number 2. So, if I do that, okay, I can then ask at least the I to create outputs for whatever there is occurrence that I can see. Okay? Now, let's go to um, here. Code Co Occurrence Explorer because I now have three codes which are overlapping. Services provided, health and local culture. But now when I do the analysis and I tell SSCI, I want to see a Code Co Occurrence Explorer for this particular three codes. Okay? Here it will tell us whatever that there is a co occurrence, it should be at the codes. Okay? Codes, whatever that co occurs, it will itemize for us one by one the codes that can occur between one code to another. Oh, where is it? Okay, right, it's here. Now, whatever co-occurrence there is, there is co-occurrence, it will tell us. If there is no co-occurrence, it will also tell us. So in this case, you have, uh, you, ha you already have, even though it's talking about lack of funding, okay, it seems that it has co-occurrence with the code name of health, okay? Yes, indeed, if you remember, we used the word health last time to uh, do auto coding. So that's why we end up with a lot of uh, quotations for that particular keyword. Right, so it will also tell us the occurrence between one code to another. Okay, which is very, very useful. <clears throat> Now, there's the, third, the first one, which is Co-Occurrence Explorer, like a Windows Explorer as well. You will see the objects, um, okay, at the right-hand side. Okay, sorry, excuse me. I wanted to talk about the co-occurrence between these codes. Okay, I was thinking something else just now. If there is such an occurrence, okay, you can see or give instructions to FTC to itemize for you these quotations which could occur between one code to another. Now, having said that, we are going to cover a little bit about this occurrence in the query tool in a short while because there are different types of uh, uh, co-occurrence out there. Now, number one is mm, Explorer, which we already have, or we can also generate a co-occurrence data in the form of table. Okay, I'm just going to close this one and I'm going to go to analysis, sorry, uh, is it? Analysis, code co occurrence table. Mm -hmm. We have the codes. Let me just show an example. Mm, services provided, health and local culture. Services provided. Mm, Health yeah, is this one. Or you can have a, okay, to build a table for the columns and the rows, we should be able to see it from here. Now in what situation do we want to create a table or a Mm, explorer just now for overlapping codes because we want to understand further for that particular quotation it could be linked to specific different codes. Okay, so in that situation we will see this one, okay, for example the uh, column, okay, here are the rows, okay, it will tell you that uh -huh, this is the code co occurrence between code A to code B. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I accidentally mentioned one feature just now, which is the query tool. Okay, the query tool is a tool which will help us to understand better our data. Now, whatever that we are covering today in session number three is, um, how do I say this? This is uh, achievable, or you will be able to do this the lessons that are taught in this third uh, day, if you have done quite a substantial amount of coding inside of your FTCI uh, 
on your com uh, software, okay? Or uh, um, oops, aha, uh -huh. I might have missed this one. I wanted to talk about uh, okay, all right. So my last statement, I'll be covering it more in the uh, query to feature in a short while. But I wanted to talk about um, yeah the different types of uh, co-occurrence. So please give me some time. I uh, mix, mix my uh, notes. Mm. Mm. Okay, up until now, if there is any questions, you can just type in the box. I hope you are still with me. Okay, all right, that's very good. Mm. Oh, yes, okay, I wanted to talk about this um, instructions that we give to FSTI. For what purpose do we uh, want to have? Okay, this is the question that I asked us now and... Uh, 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 before I mix my notes. In what situation is it important for us to know the co-occurrence? Because we want to know if one statement, they could carry different meanings or multiple mean meaning even though they co-occur between one code to uh, another. Okay, It's not actually uh, one code over another but a co-occurrence of that quotation as opposed to another quotation, right? Right. All right, this is uh, good. Now, co-occurrence for values A and B, because A and B are two quotes attached to quotation number one, while... Uh, the instructions, okay, you will remember if I ask ourselves or we ask ourselves in our research after a substantial amount of coding and memory, we will be asking if there is any quotation between code A and code B, so it will bring out the result of quotation number one, okay? But if we ask if there is any occurrence between A and C, A and C, it will bring up uh, quotations 1 and 2. Okay, quotations 1 and 2. In this situation, if there is any occurrence between A and D, it will be quotations 1 and quotation number 3. So, uh, I was opening my, alright, this is the Excel uh, file. Uh, not as a fun, this is a table that we can export later on. Okay. Right. So we can put at the columns plus the rows. Now, since this is the row for health, okay, health, it has the uh, largest number of quotations uh, because we did the autocoding. So eventually it will generate a larger number, uh, a larger number for our uh, oh, co-occurrence between one code to another. There was a question just now about the numbers. Okay, now these numbers will help us to understand the level of interaction between one quotation to another by using the identifier of the specific codes. So we cannot say if this code could occur with another code. It's actually a quotation which could occur with another. That's why when we put our cursor at these columns, okay, uh, for example, the first column, okay, I want to see what is the occurrence, co-occurrence between code health and challenges lack of funding. Make it bigger, okay? Challenges lack of funding and here is services provided. Okay. Right. So you will see that this is it. You bring in um, out, okay, so here is the number. Uh, it will tell you that if in the column of, oh, sorry, the result, I should make it bigger. Hi, Annie. 
what do the colors represent oh okay uh, the bolder the color is the larger the occurrence more occurrence means it will become dark if it's green or it's less green so there is no occurrence like this okay as for the colors that is it okay the the, the more overlapping or one quote one quotation is occurring with another quotation it will be darker okay uh, less dark it would mean that it is uh, less occurring between one to another okay so i shouldn't be maximizing this mm -hmm. because if i don't maximize it will bring us back to the original location for example this one it says if there is any overlapping uh, between challenges lack of funding and health okay so in this case when i double click on this particular code, it will bring me to this location. Poverty. Okay, the word poverty, which has been coded with challenges like a funding, okay, which eventually means that it is now occurring between challenges like a funding and health, because this is health and this is lack of funding. Mm, Alright, uh, that is uh, the not the green one because the green one is this one okay the green one I will now unlink this one why because okay I need to show you an example right so in this particular case there are two overlapping uh, occurrence here okay for lack of funding inside of health When we double click on this one, it will bring to that one. But here, when uh, when one person asks about the colors just now, okay, the the darker it is, which is black color, you have a lot of quotations which are occurring between one to another at columns for services provided as well as health. So if you don't maximize it, okay, I don't normally maximize it, but I want to show you. When we double click, it will bring you back to that location. But how to? All right. I'm going to make it smaller, this one. All right. So that you'll be able to see it. As well as this one. Okay. All right. This is good. I know it's not this one. Big two. All right. Health and services provided. Is it? Okay. Health and services provided. That's good. So we will see that eventually services provided is this one. How do you know that this is services provided? Is by the color of that uh, quotation. If the bar is gray, then the small color beside the note, beside the code name is also gray. And this one is health. Okay, so two lines, it has smaller lines. So again, it will tell you if this is the overlapping ones. So let us also bring in these challenges very rural background and challenges of malnutrition to the description of population served. Uh, okay. Very rural background and signs of malnutrition. Uh -huh. So you will see again. If it is for this particular code name of description of population served, you'll be able to see these uh, co-occurrence numbers. Okay? Mm. Alright. Okay, that's good. Uh, apart from creating it in this format, okay, we can now generate it in Excel export the table in Excel delimited format, send it to the editor, which will eventually open it in this format. Ugh. If there is another option, uh, when this pressed, uh, let's look at, no, it's not, it's not what we are looking for. 
I am looking to export the table in a normal uh, Excel file, but you cannot seem to find it now. Because if it's comma delimited, then it will be a little bit uh, problematic for us. Okay, I will simply file. Okay, file. If I open it in editor, it will open in a text file. But if I save it, it will later on open in. Oh, again, as well. All right, save it to the desktop for Conference International Health. And from my Excel, I will now open that file. Open on my desktop. Aha, now we can open it in there. Aha, uh -huh, okay. All right. However, when we export it into uh, Excel, it will not be interactive as before because it will not actually tell us which quotation the ones that we are referring to. Mm -hmm. So for this particular one, it's very much similar because it is only one quotation where the uh, co-occurrence is uh, for the both quotes itself. Okay, likewise this one, we have a lot more, documents 8, 9, 10, and 11, document number 8, 9, and 12, 11, and 9. Okay, mm, I have another presentation that I want to show you for uh, co-occurrence here because just now, this is a very basic one. There is another presentation uh, which I could not find it before our uh, class today, but I will be sharing it using new transfer later on, which explains different types of uh, co-occurrence because this one, co-occurrence means one overlapping over the other. However, the other presentation, it will tell you more detail if we do not want it only to occur, but I want specifically Code A, a quotation coded with A if it is within another code, okay? So it will be uh, uh, more helpful, okay? Because otherwise, the occurrence is a general one. But the example types of what type of occurrence that we can uh, specifically give instruction, for example, inside of the query tool function, okay? When I open the query tool function, you will see here, all right, this is on my left hand side here, is the options for what type of co-occurrence that I want. However, if you want simply a normal co-occurrence, which is a very general one, without specific instructions, this is it, okay? The last option over here is the co-occurrence tool. Okay, but the on top here, from here, is for example within, encloses, overlapped by, overlaps, this one follows, precedes. However, the precedes and follows is not covered inside of co-occurrence. Why? Because it doesn't occur. Okay, it is one quotation on top of the other where you only want the ones which is at the bottom or you only want the ones immediately precedes or the one which is on top. Example in this case is, let me just do a very quick one, mm, all right here. Nurses visit, mm, mm, services provided. Okay, I'm just going to choose one uh, existing code, which is uh, lack of resources, okay? So that one, you will see that this quotation and this quotation does not occur between one another. Why? Because it is one quotation on top of the other. There is no overlapping between one code to another, uh, one quotation on top uh, with another quotation. So in this case, 
for the case of health, okay, because this one is coded with health, whereby this one is coded with uh, lack of resources, we can use these two functions over here, which is follows and precedes. The, on top here, the four ones are the co-occurrence, uh, all the features of the co-occurrence that we can use. Now, um, since we are already at the query tool function, I would like to explain what is the query tool. It is a tool inside of FSTI that we can use to uh, explore our quotation based on the functions of codes versus documents. Okay, So in this case, if I give instructions to FSTI to uh, find the quotation for a particular code, the results will be shown bottom here. Okay, these are the list of codes. These are the list of code families. When we give instructions to FSTI to explore the quotations for a specific code, for example, lack of volunteers over here, we double click, it will list down for us the result bottom right hand side here. For example, I want FSTI to retrieve for me all the quotations for very rural background. Okay? Double click and the results will be shown before us. Let me simply explain to you. Okay? The results will be shown here. What does this color mean? It is the active query. Meaning, this is the instruction that we have given and these are the results. Whatever history that you have searched okay, will be uh, shown on top here. When you double click on another code, that new code will become the active query and the earlier ones will simply be listed at the history. Okay, now when I move on to above average for example, this is the active query and this is the history. You can always go back to it okay, to find uh, that whatever that you have explained earlier, right, for the active query. Now, since you already know that this is an active query, sorry, this is the results for the active query of a birth average, you can then, uh, if you want, you can double click and it will bring you back to the original location, or you can simply give instructions at this time, please compile for me all or everything that I have coded with uh, above average okay, by clicking on the printer icon and choosing full content. Let me just choose full content and save it to the editor. Here it is. Whatever that you have coded earlier, okay, the quotations will be shown in our query report. Like this. Okay? If you have uh, you're running a literature review, for example, and that particular PDF document, you cannot highlight it accordingly because it is a secured PDF. You simply highlight, like you are copying an image of that particular sentence or paragraph in that PDF document. In your query report, those segments will be appearing here. Yes, you cannot edit it because it's part of an image or treated as an image if it's a PDF. However, it is already the quotation that you have identified earlier for our research. Okay. Now, you will also realize the ones that we have uh, learned just now okay, about co-occurrence and also these instructions. We will need to choose two codes, two or more codes. Okay? which we find or we want to examine if they are occurring between one to another, double click on two codes and then you will choose the instructions that you want. Okay. Now, let me just go to the occurrence here. I'm going to choose the code of health together lack of uh, funding. Okay. It will take the, uh, uh, the last two code names that you have and bring it to the co-occurring instruction. In this case, when I give instructions, I want the code health which occurs with lack of funding, okay, 
and because just now I was explaining about the theory part, but here is the tech, uh, the practical part where I want actually to, to retrieve for me the quotation which has the code names occurring between the code name health with lack of funding. Mm, okay, all right, that's uh, very good. Mm, oh, okay, I missed out this question. Does a co-occurrence indicate a possible correlation? Yes, correct. If there is any co-occurrence at all, it would mean that there is a possible connection or correlation between quotation A to quotation B. I give you an example. One entire paragraph is talking about uh, families. Yeah, or no, not not families in that sense, but uh, a quotation about the the interviewer asked the participant, can you tell me or explain about your family members? Okay, so this uh, interview participant will explain to us, yes, uh, my family is a very loving family. Uh, my father always goes out to work and come home by uh, bringing livelihood and my mother is very helpful at home and my brother goes to school and when he comes back he always helps with my homework and my sister is also a nice person. So that particular entire statement has the largest quotation size because it's one entire paragraph. If we do coding also on specific members of the family, for example, a statement on father, we code it with father. A statement by mother is coded with mother. A statement of about sister is good with sister. So in that case, you will definitely find co-occurring situations between the quotation of code A with quotations of code B. So in this case, I find that uh, I find that when I give instructions, I want to see any quotation uh, for the code names health to occurring with the code name of lack of funding and the result is shown bottom here double click it will bring you back to the original location if you want to send or create an output okay you can go to the printer icon over here simply bringing your cursor it will give tell you that this is to print the result click on the printer and choose full content okay full content Send it to the editor if you want to edit it. Printer if you want to print it straight away. File if you want to save it. File and run if you want to save it and open it uh, at the same time. Right? So because this is a demonstration, I'm going to choose editor. Click on OK and the system will tell me, all right, there is one quotation found for the query of health occurring with lack of funding, which is quotation number 421. Okay, so you remember what is 421 mean? It is a quotation coming from document number 4. That is the 21st quotation which was created on document number 4. Okay, here it is. This one it explained to me this is the statement which occurs between code, house and lack of funding. Now let us do another example. Um, I want uh, occurring between health and uh, very rural background. Click on the button occurring. Oh, it seems that there is no um, connection okay, between health which occurs with uh, very rural background. Right? But we are now going to uh, a more detailed explanation on this tree. Okay. Um, I want like let me just show you. Okay, right. Health and um, all right. Okay. Or uh, how to make it bigger so that everybody will be able to see it. Uh, all right. Document number one. Ah, right. This is a very good example. Mm, right. Uh, I want the code, uh, a quotation which has been coded with very rural background within a description of population serve. Okay, so you will see this entire paragraph talks about the description of the population serve, 
and at the same time there is one smaller quotation within that large quotation which talks about very rural background over here so I can use this icon oops not this uh, pen which is uh, red in color okay is this one okay this quotation this is the function that we can use okay so you can see the red uh, red uh, highlighting it shows something like this it's a quotation talking about family just now and and then what we want is in between so for the example of family members just now this is the entire paragraph that that interview participant was talking about his family and this is the part that is talking about mother the mother always uh, takes care of the family at home okay for example so if I want to explore my data by asking I to find for me or to retrieve for me any quotation coded with mother which is within the quotation coded with family so therefore you will click on this icon within because it will retrieve for us all the quotations for that particular instruction it will bring out only the red ones if it is within the code name of our instructions again so in this case when I choose okay uh, description of the population self occurring within so I'm going to choose very rural background okay within description of the population served and then I'm going to click on this icon it will tell me these are the results found for very rural background within description of population served for all we know there are already four quotations which fulfill this requirement or this instruction let me just all right single click on any one of it sorry double click on any one of these will bring me back to the original location okay this part is also yes this part is a very rural background within description of the population serve our patients are usually put again this is very rural background within description of population serve and last but not least is topic number 11 where it says the uh, very rural background which is within the description of population served okay all right now that is the first one what about the second one we don't want what is the smaller uh, option but we want the bigger option for example I want to say uh, to retrieve for me all the quotations coded with family which inside that quotation contains mothers okay so it's the other way around from just now if we do within it will bring out the mother quotation if we do encloses it will bring out the quotation on family okay so in this case i'm going to choose this option option number two oops uh cancel all okay so i'm gonna put um description of population served very rural background and here it is Description of the population served, which encloses upon challenges of very rural backgrounds. So in this case, yes, we do have, uh, again, four results. But this is different from the first one. Because the first result will tell us the smaller quotation. But the second result will, talk, will uh, retrieve for us the bigger or the larger quotation. Next is the overlapped by, okay, overlapped by, uh, I have an example for that, I simply created it just now, uh, do you remember three, uh, nope, do you remember two, uh, okay, alright, this one, the code health, which was 
overlapping upon the code name health. Oh, that's not a very good example. Uh, right, this one. Health. Okay, health, which encloses upon. Okay, all right. Here. Uh, very complicated because. Uh, all right, this one is a good example. I want. Okay, because you will see that the keyword health now is overlapping upon uh, this one. All right. Okay. Good. Oops. Okay. Local culture. So you will see that the quotation coded with the green uh, code here is actually overlapping on the code name with the orange color here, which is health okay so now in this instruction if I were to use the third option which is overlapped by or the fourth option which is overlaps this will be very helpful for the case of health and local culture now then again to respond to one of the uh, one of our friends asking does it mean that if there is any occurrence or this other detail uh, relationships does it mean that there is a, a, a correlation between one code to another? Yes, this is essentially what it means because now this is overlapping upon this one. So you will be able to choose um, local culture and health. Local culture and health, third option. I want to find if there is, oh, local culture, health first it should be, health and then local culture, here it is, ah, the code name health which is overlapped by local culture. Now then again, the this feature for the FST iQuery tool you will be using it a lot when you are exploring your data after you have done quite a substantial amount of coding. Okay. Now, assuming you have just started out, okay, I just come to the class because I want to learn about this coding. Okay. Uh, if it is the first time you are learning the technicals of it, this might not be useful for your case yet. But in future, once there is a lot of quotations, a lot of codes for those quotations, then by no, by all means we need to learn about overlaps and overlapping over here. Alright, uh, okay, the fifth and the sixth one is not co-occurrence. Why? Because it is one quotation finish and then another quotation takes over. Okay, so in this uh, particular case, it is overlapping. Now let me show you an example. I created it also just now. Uh, okay, let me do this. Cluttered information. Aha, uh -huh. okay, health. It's this one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put the code name to be uh, what? Uh, codes. unhealthy environment okay here it is so you will see that this uh, aha this is helpful you will see that the code name unhealthy environments is on top of the code of health okay, this will be helpful because if you want to find whatever quotations that you have for uh, uh, these two codes, uh, one on top of the other. Okay, so I hope everybody is okay. Whereby when you do that, the results will be shown bottom right hand side and you can print, okay, full content, which will be eventually uh, explain to us that yes, we can uh, have these other quotations for the code of a health which is overlapped by local culture.
Okay, alright, so that's very good. I am happy that we have come to this stage. I need to explain further about filtering our uh, results. Because if you don't click on scope to filter, you will have hundreds of uh, quotations okay, for uh, a particular code name or a family uh, without having regard to uh, whatever scope that we want. Okay, So, for example, I want only within the document family of uh, uh, 2010 literatures or 2007 literatures. So, you can put a scope to it. Maybe only interviews, then you can put a scope to it. Okay, alright. So, we are going to take a break uh, around uh, 10 minutes and we are going to come back at 2.37. Okay, I need to explain about putting a scope here. Alright.
Okay, before we took a break just now, I was explaining about um, the operators that we can use uh, in a query to uh, function. Before we get to the scope, let me simply uh, explain about um, these other operators that we have over here. The first type of operator, a very common one, is the Boolean operator. Okay, Boolean operator of or, exclusively or, and none. Okay, so uh, let me simply open a or if we have it smaller. Okay, okay. oh, uh -uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right. Um. Okay. All right. So, um, okay, I will simply draw on this okay all right it's like this if it is uh, about when uh, black in color right. so it's like this okay right so, uh, code A and code B, the quotation is quotation number 1, quotation number 2, quotation number 3, and quotation number 4. There are four quotations that we are focusing on now, which is quotations number 1, 2, 3, and 4, and this is where they belong in. Quotations 1, 2, and 3 have been coded with code name A. Quotations number 3 and 4 have been coded with code B. Okay. There is only one quotation which has been coded with two code names, which is A and B. That is quotation number 3. Okay. Now, I want at least to, to uh, retrieve for me the quotation for... A particular instruction. So the first instruction I'm going to do um, on this icon which is or. Or it means at least one term matches. So or would include this col col columns. Okay. So if we give the instructions to Atlas DI to retrieve for us all the quotations for code A or code B, then it will bring up for us quotations number 1, 2, 3, and 4. So long uh, it fulfills any one of the code names. So in this situation, I am going to use... Um, the example of uh, health and local culture. So in this case, again, I'm going to use a health, uh, right, and local culture, and use the function or. So long, it fulfills the requirement of health or local culture. I have around 262. But what if I want only the overlapping one? So we are going to use the Boolean operator end. Okay, is this one? Right. Uh, upside. Uh, okay, local culture and health. Upside. Oh. Local culture and health. Oh. Okay, mm, the quotation which has been coded. Okay, the result is none. It's because 
no uh, quotation which has been coded with both A and B. So, uh, not a very good example also. Let me just choose. Uh, okay. Science of malnutrition. I also want this to be coding unhealthy environments. Okay. So, in this case, I want science of malnutrition nutrition and unhealthy environments. Or would mean all the quotations so long it is coded with any one of these but the moment you change it to sense of nutrition in unhealthy environments but you use and it will only bring out the quotation which has been coded with both which is in this case it ratio 3 which is in this particular image it's in quotation the third quotation okay, how do you know that let's go and print it out um, click on the printer icon and choose full content, send it to the editor, and here it is. Okay, here the system tells me that there is only one quotation which is used by um, uh, coded with signs of malnutrition and unhealthy environments. Okay, now here exclusively or Exclusively or means I want at least I to retrieve for me codes A exclusively or code B, meaning I want anyone that is coded only with A or only with B and I do not want the one that is coded by both. Okay, so in this case, it will show me. Oh, Alright, I accidentally deleted it. Uh, Right. A, B, and C just now. Okay. A. Okay. So in this case, I do not want this one. I do not want this part. I only want this part. Okay, this part as well as this part exclusively or now another instruction is none of the search term matches so this is code A this is code B so it will capture all the other quotations outside of the scope okay uh, outside of that two code names A and B it could be C it could be D but anything which is not a and B. Okay, so in this case, not A and B. Okay. Um, for our uh, this one, analysis or exploration of data. Now moving on to uh, oops, there is another type of boolean operator, uh, another type of oper operators that I uh, forgot to mention. Okay, these three. Uh, three relationships which is down, up and siblings. Siblings are uh, if it's in a hierarchy it is at the same level. Okay, So I want anything which is at the same level. So in this case our relationships which we create between code to code it must be hierarchical order it cannot be contradict. It cannot be indicate. It cannot be uh, uh, any other relationships, but it must be one on top of the other. For example, include, okay, comprise of, okay, because it would mean that we can see the hierarchy of that quotation of of, of that code. Okay, so in these cases, we do not have. Uh, codes which we have arranged it uh, hierarchically okay? then it would mean that uh, we you know we should practice this one okay, very quickly in my code manager I will find that okay funding I add a link code for 
Okay, so just shows to improve. And I find that all these three on suggestion is actually under suggestion to improve. So right click on suggestion to improve to open the network view. It would already have mentioned to you, yes, these are the codes which are, uh, uh, these codes are, is part of the bigger code name. Right? So in this case, if there is such a hierarchy, what are the siblings? Siblings are intervention by government, siblings with recruit volunteers, and funding as well as resources. But this one is not a sibling. This is actually the um, what main code name that you are uh, focusing on right now at the moment. Okay, now I promised to talk about the uh, scope just now. I want at least for me to produce a on the process one and just analysis for you to. I know that I have found 259 uh, quotations for uh, the code name of health. Now, these 259 comes from all of my documents. What if I want to uh, specify the quotations for the word health, for the code name health, in uh, a specific document family or a specific uh, document only. Okay, so here, this 259, I'm going to click on the scope I scope button over here. Okay, this is the scope button. Okay, I will simply click on it. Okay, it will bring out another window with the title of scope of query. So definitely because if we are um, the main window of scope, then you're going to give instructions to uh, find somebody else to find or generate this uh, specific families that we want. Okay, so in this case, I want the quotation for health within the family of gender female. Okay, no result. Gender male. Country, this one, uh, okay, this not a very good example. Uh, okay, not a very good example, just to show you. Um, the cute house, as mentioned by specific family of WHO documents. Aha, here it is. Oops, sorry. I became too excited because I got this. If you put a scope to it, okay, the results will be showing like this. The active query is mentioned in this column, whereby the scope will be mentioned at the bottom bar over here beside result. Initially, it was 259, but when we put a scope to it, entitled WHO documents, the result is 200. Uh, 43 quotations. Go to the printer icon, choose full content. Okay, and the system is ready to send it to the editor, and here it is. There are 243 quotations found for the query within the documents of WHO document. Okay, so it is itemized bottom here. What if I want uh, between the code of uh, bulletin, okay, again, 79, uh, uh, there are 79 quotations for the code name of health within the scope of WHO bulletin, for example, and when you print on uh, the printer icon full content, send it to the editor and try to save it on top of your, on your desktop. Here it is. Now close, minimize, and here it is. International Health Query Report. Double click upon it, and here it is. Okay, the result for uh, 
right? So within the family of WHO bulletin. This will be very helpful when we are generating um, reports, okay, cross case analysis. For example, here is uh, uh, the response given by male respondents. And then we also have a group of uh, female respondents. Okay. So in such a case, I can create separate outputs. Okay, report for the report based on the instruction. Now uh, go for a specific family. Okay, or the next one is to go for a specific family as well. Mm -hmm. Then you can put a scope to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this case, that's it. Close it. And we are going to have mm, another type of report, okay, which is reporting. Okay, so I'm not going to go uh, dive in only one, uh, one type of report. This type of report is you can create on various types of Reports in ICSTI number one is the document output. Okay. Mm, I should close this one. Aha, okay. You can go to the menu documents and you will choose the option output. Do you want a list of documents only? Or codes dash family document table? Or you want to send it to a word cloud? Or to show the hierarchy plus the quotation. If you want the documents to be shown, the list of documents, for example, now I already have added 20 general articles into my project. So you can later on print out the list of documents by going to documents new, sorry, documents output, list of documents. Here. Here it is. It will tell us Document number one, document number two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so a lot of numbers here. It will only list down for you your mm, this particular code. Okay, all right. So mm, other than the output of the list of documents. We are going to go to Documents Output. The other option is send it to the Word Cloud, for example. It's still counting. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Or Documents Output, Quotations, or Print News Margin. Okay. Printing with margin is a very useful feature I found because when my participants they are having problem um, of coming up with their literature which has been or literature or data which has been linked to specific quotes. Sorry, um, what was I saying? Okay, output the oh, okay with the specific quotes in the margin area. So we can now print it with margin. Mm, example KDF print and here it is. Mm -hmm. I can save it onto my desktop with a file name uh, document output. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Oh, uh -huh. no, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. Documents, output, ah, print with margin. Okay, all right, cute. We get printer. Aha, it's already on my castle. It's actually on my desktop. A document output. Aha, here it is. Now the system will tell me that here is document number eight, participant number one. Who made it? Okay, the path. These are the families of the document. Okay, in which this document belongs to. 
and here it is. This is how printing with margin will look like if we are printing it accordingly um, with margin. Okay. Of course, it will not bring out the highlighted segment in the text, but it will each quotation will be shown. Okay. Each quotation is now uh, will be shown as the bar on the right hand side of the margin area together with the name of the uh, uh, quotation. Okay, the labels, the code which has been attached to it. Right. Mm, right. Another thing is quotation. You can also output quotation, select the quotation or all quotations or speak the quotation. Okay. So in this case, we try to speak the quotation. Mm, okay. All right. Now, the bigger question is codes output. Codes output, it will bring you quotation for that code. Okay. If you have highlighted any code up front or mm, create a quotation list or include subterms. So these are all the um, options that we can do to send an output. That output, okay, if you um, wish to save it, then you will save it. But if you open it in editor, which I always do open in editor, we can change the contents of it. For example, you want to make bold and underline certain keywords. Okay, for example, you can edit it. After editing, then only you will save it. Mm -hmm. All right. The next type of uh, output is to create a code dash primary document table. Okay, which essentially means I want at least I to create for me. Uh, excuse me to create for me a table for code names. Here, okay, codes A, B, and C in the document number one, document number two, and document number three. Okay, so in this case, what it means is I want to say uh, to do a uh, frequency. Okay, and to tell me how many times there is a, a quotation for both code A within the family of one. And maybe the system will tell us that it is one time. Okay, one time. Code A was mentioned one time in document number uh, B. Oops, sorry, document number one in this case. One, two, one. Okay. Zero because it was not could be was not referred in document number one. Okay. Three, two. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Okay. So uh what I what I want to get this is supposed to be two. What I want at least to do is to create a table for the axis x and y, our documents versus uh, the code names okay the documents versus the code names so in this case how to create that is by going to codes output codes dash primary documents table okay it gets its name from the uh, data that uh, there is okay which is the code name versus primary documents table. When you click on it, this will this window will come out. Okay. Now, this window, you need to identify the axis x and y for the uh, okay axis x and y. So, for example, in this case, I want it to be health. You can add all codes or only specific ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. Here it is. Okay. 
I want to find the occurrence of the word health in the document participants 1 under 5. Okay, so in this case, I have the option to choose two identifiers. Number one is quotation. What is it that you want to fill in the blank as a cell value? Okay, so if you check mark on quotation, it will mean you want to see how many quotations are there for the code name of health within this family of participants 1 and 5. Okay. Or you can also do a word count. Let's first do a quotation count by creating a report. Mm -hmm. Yes, here it is. In total 11, okay, the code health was, uh, it appears two times in document number 8, four times in document number 9, two times. So um, this will be useful when we have a lot of uh, data that we need to explain. Okay, analyze, analyze or explain. This is the quotation count. Let us go back and do the word count. Okay, don't say. Ah, here is the one. Instead of looking into the number of quotations for that code versus the document, let's go to words. Okay. <clears throat> okay, how many words have been coded with the code name health within the documents of participant 1 until participant 5. Okay, how many words? That's it. So we create reports. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, here it is. Now, this will inform us that the word health was referred to in documents 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay? And it will also tell us in total, there are 46 uh, words, okay, which have been coded accordingly. And we simply see that this uh, percentage will change. Okay? For example, for the code name health, that, uh, it is selected on 46 words okay, within the total word count of 139 which is 33 percent the first the second one is 68 percent the given number uh, 31 okay, is 21 percent so it will tell us that the with health was highlighted or selected since 2006 okay oh sorry it's not this is 206 ah, I wanted to say uh, 206 okay and the average is total average is 34 percent 34 percent the word count of the total words in that data which is documents number 8 until 12 right okay. oops okay nope so all right. All right. Uh huh. Now, create report either for the quotation or for the words. Now, um, one last uh, topic I want to talk about is creating backups in Atlas DI. Now, you see, when you have added documents to the project. Those primary documents are not suitable. Okay? Let me just recap that. When we add documents to the project, our uh, documents have been converted and added to the library of FSAI. That is the correct statement. Those documents have been added, copied, added, and uh, now, okay, in the library of Atlas AI. The library is a 
default location uh, for all the documents of our FSL project in that computer. In another computer, if you install FSL, it's a different library. So, having said that, there are two components here. The first component is our HU project. The second component is uh, the mm, document. If you do open that issue in the same computer, it should not be a problem. Why? Because it can capture the data that there is from the uh, uh, capture the data from that uh, document. Okay. So in this case, uh, from the library, yeah, I want to say library. So if you save only the issue project, for example, this one, okay. I save it and then I will go to project save as onto the desktop with a different name then uh, it's a problem okay why because that project alone is uh, in the same computer no problem but you cannot transport the issue to a second computer because uh, the link to the library is lost let me just do something very quickly. Okay, choose by color, black. Here, it's black. Okay. All right. So here we have the uh, issue. Okay, because I asked everybody uh, uh, about the issue. Okay, so issue. Normally, I would advise my students to put it onto the desktop or any location which is easier for the uh, for us to find. Okay, so in this case. Example, the issue we will put on the desktop and then we add PDF, TXT, uh, other types of documents into the, issue, into the issue. What essentially happens is that FSTI will, um, FSTI will add our documents, it's like PDF, DOC, DOCF. It will add these documents to the library where in fact the issue will be able to read the contents of that library. Okay, so in this case, if you only transport the issue, you cannot transport the issue itself. You have to transport the issue together with the family. Okay, together with the document in the library. That, is, that works as a zip function where you combine multiple files to be one big file. Okay, so that you'll be able to uh, transport it somewhere. Okay, so likewise in this case, it is transportable to another device or as a backup if you zip or combine together the issue together with the library. Okay, so in this case, we need to create a zip folder for the issue together with the library. Okay. It is uh, okay. It is for a project, first you need to save your project. You can save it by clicking on the disk icon or, uh, uh, or it's not all but the next thing is you can create a zip folder now in atlasti that zip we call it as a bundle it is after saving your project you'll be able to create a copy bundle copy bundle is the um, uh, zip version of the issue together with the library. So in this case, I will save bundle and the system will, will ask me do I want all the files to be added in the bundle. So it is highly advisable to check all files so that you can uh, create a complete backup file. Okay, so in this case, the status at least I mentioned to us that all documents will be bundled. That's it. So we create a bundle and put it on the desktop, for example. Here it is. The system says that copy bundle has been finished and saved. So, okay. 
Use this one and this one. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So you will see it is slightly different because a red in color with transparent background is a shortcut to the Active CI software. Whereby this one is the project. Okay. In uh, at the CI that we created the issue, it is a red in color with a white background, which is a uh, it's like a paper, right? But this is only a issue which is not properly transportable to another device or location, but it is like in a box, okay? Chocolate box. There is a, an earth in between whereby it, uh, it says that this is the proper backup. Oops, sorry. I accidentally double-click it. Okay, cancel. Now, you will now have a complete backup file. So, what do you do with this uh, copy bundle of FTCI project? We will save it in external drive as far as possible from the original location of the issue for fear that um, for fear that uh, you can now uh, have all the back uh, the backup version of it so what do you do if the uh, first computer uh, breaks down okay so in this case if this issue is missing you can simply double click okay, on the copy bundle and the system will tell you what is the status. So in this case, uh, all the documents are excluded because um, there is no progress or development from the last time you created the copy bundle. So in this case, you can unbundle it, which will mean that... Uh, um, okay, so these documents are excluded. So in this case, since there is no development, it says here these documents are excluded. So even if you unbundle, it will not uh, unbundle at all unless you have made some changes and then you save it again, then it's available for unbundling. Okay, now we have issues whereby uh, where do you keep the bundles? Uh, I mentioned it earlier, you can be put as far as possible from the original location. Some people decided to put it into a pen drive, put it into a laptop bag together with the laptop. Okay, That laptop got stolen together with the bag, together with the data and analysis. Okay, So we try to avoid something like that uh, to happen. So how often do we create copy bundle? Every time we uh, do a significant change in our research, okay, then you can do another um, um, right? Okay. That bundle. Okay now one license um, one license key for the Atlas AI software can be installed on two computers. Bundling will also be required when you are transporting from computer A to computer B. Okay, so in that case, tonight at home you create a project, you bundle it and synchronize to Dropbox or put it into a pen drive for that matter. Tomorrow at the office, you just switch on the copy bundle. Okay, or you can simply use the... Uh, uh, I wanted to say... Where do you save it? Okay, that's correct. Uh, cloud storage. Okay, cloud storage, email to yourself is a potential places where we can save it. If you do a significant change, simply create another bundle. Why? Because the bundle that you created last time is up to the stage of when was the last time you save it. Okay, so in that case, if you save it at 5 o'clock, it only incorporates those changes you make until that 5 o'clock. 
Okay, now I was talking about licenses and when the uh, at night we do it, uh, we create a project and edit documents. Tomorrow when we arrive at the office, we can synchronize from Dropbox and uh, unbundle it on our uh, office laptop, for example. Right, so uh, essentially I have covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, if you do have questions, I find that we are rather quiet tonight. Uh, normally we have quite a number of questions. Okay, questions are starting to come in. Do you do the copy bundle override one another? Oh, that's a very good question. Or you will eventually have many of them. It depends. If you use a unique name, for example, uh, copy bundle March, copy bundle April, copy bundle May, then you will have many of them on your on our desktop or in any location that we have. I always advise my students if you link your laptop to Dropbox for example or any cloud storage, okay, it is recommended that you have a folder, a specific folder in your uh, Dropbox folder okay, for copy bundles only so that you will be able to save copy bundle through progress each month maybe or each week. Okay. Uh, all right. But if you use the same name, okay, I do not want it to be a January, February, March, April. I just want it to be education. No problem. It will overwrite one another. Okay. All right. So, um, Okay, I was talking about licenses just now. Uh, actually, somebody PM me uh, about the question. It, right, accessti.com. When you go to our official website at atlasti.com, you will be able to come to this front page which has the link order and pricing. This link will bring you to our Atlasti shopping cart. So in this situation, you will be able to find the different types of licenses and you can change the currency that you want. Okay, for example, you want it to be USD. Oh, okay, here, yes, dollar. Okay, it will revise. But because everybody is connected to me, all our course participants will be entitled to 10% discount. If you don't already own or your institution uh, does not provide you with the FSTI license, uh, you could consider to get the full version uh, and I will help you to place order for it. Why? Because I have 10% coupon codes for all of my uh, uh, workshop uh, or online courses uh, participants. Okay. It will revise, this coupon code will revise the price, the published price on our website to be less than, uh, to be less by 10%. Okay, uh, then again, some students, okay, I need to explain to us that student licenses are uh, heavily discounted because taking into account that it is the student um, uh, student credentials okay so uh, the duration that a student can choose is either per semester which is six months or for two years if your license is expiring in that two years you can request for uh, extension okay and that extension is reduced by ten dollars, ten US dollars. Okay. Mm, okay, that's very good. Uh, any other books or guide that we recommend for our students is definitely the book by Professor Dr. Suzanne Fries uh, from the Technical University of Berlin. She is our, um, she is our. Um, product expert for Atlas DI, okay, master trainer for Atlas DI. Uh, this is the location. Uh, let me just write here.
um, Susan Fries. This is the book. Qualitative analysis with at least the eye. Okay. It's a page. At the moment, it is version 2, which was published in 2014. Okay. Well, March 2014 by Professor Susan Fries. And uh, the description. Okay. Alright, so this is her first edition. Okay, now we have the second edition. Alright, so this is the book that I encourage uh, on qualitative data analysis with that. This is the first version. Let's look at the second version. Yeah, this this is the one. The second version of the a book highly recommended okay uh, any other questions hmm. ah okay Lynette uh, I'm happy for you that you have already purchased a license and you did receive that discount I am also happy to note that you have already gotten the book by uh, this is Anne Fries okay she is uh, uh, very helpful and I believe her email address is also provided in the book okay, so that you can email uh, her for uh, additional resources for example okay all right so uh, we have come to the end of our three days course uh, I have promised you a few things uh, first and foremost is the uh, teaching slides, okay, the slides that I use for this uh, three days training, I'm going to share with them, uh, share share it with you using WeTransfer in a short while. Uh, and um, second is yeah, explanation about co-occurrence uh, because I was from outside just now when I came back, I couldn't find the PowerPoint slides that I wanted to share with you on co-occurrence. I will be sharing with that also with you. Um, Susan is asking about how to reach out to me in the WeTransfer email. Okay, I sent to you. You already have uh, my email address, so I would be looking forward to any educational questions that you may have uh, in future about using FTCI. Okay, uh, I will try my best to help you. Or if you're teaching at an institution and any of your students who are uh, interested to uh, buy a license and they need some information, you can also direct them to me or you can compile their questions and I will help to respond to them accordingly. Okay, um, you will be hearing from our coordinator Eve. She will be following up with you uh, especially about uh, any feedback that you may give. Please give your honest feedback. I need uh, any feedback, both positive and negative. Okay? Uh, how, uh, at the same time, okay, I am also available if you need any clarification. Uh, how to receive the recording of the webinar? Yes, I'll be sending them by email as well. Mm. Okay, all right. Uh, I will uh, be uh, waiting for any questions that you may have additionally after this by email and you should expect to receive my uh, uh, WeTransfer uh, documents. Uh, if not tomorrow, it should be tomorrow, okay? Uh, I'll be sending them to you. All right. Okay, uh, nice meeting everybody here. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize for any uh, wrong statements uh, because of my uh, explaining of things. Okay. However, uh, I am confident that whatever that I have shared is uh, a summary of what you can find from the quick tour. Oh yes, I should direct you to the quick tour while we are here. The quick tour is at our FSTI software. Uh -huh. You simply go to help 
and you can choose the quick tour to open the quick tour whereby if you have time because quick tour is 90 plus page it's a pdf document which is around uh, 72 pages are that's, that's an improvement because the last version we had was 94 pages uh, and if you have more time or need more information you can go to more resources to open the manual which is 400 pages plus 426 pages okay for quick information you can email me and I will try my best to respond accordingly to you okay all right so that's it what I want to share uh, I thank you everybody for joining our webinar and uh, that's it okay all right bye bye everyone